With me today, I have a brand new 2020 Subaru WRX. Now this 2020 model year will be the final year before a complete refresh. 2021 will debut a brand new WRX. So in this final year, is this still competitive? Is this still a proper sports sedan? That's what I'm here to find out. So in this review video, learn everything there is to know about this brand new WRX so you can decide if this is the right sports sedan for you. Stay tuned. I want to give a big shout out to the Auto Barn Subaru in Countryside. They made this video possible. So if you're in the market for a brand new or used Subaru, then definitely check out this dealership. Their URL is on the screen and in the description below. Let's start out by looking at the exterior to this brand new WRX. The front end has an aggressive design with a huge functional hood scoop on top, along with some good looking headlights and an edgy bumper design. This black on black WRX is absolutely stunning. This premium model I'm reviewing today has projector headlights and fog lights, which are both halogen. The limited trim gets the LED treatment for both. Moving on to the side, the black on black theme really makes an impact. As you'll notice, there's no chrome anywhere besides the WRX badge. The wheels on the Premium Limited are 18 inch with a dark gray finish and they're wrapped with 245-40 summer tires. The base trim gets a 17 inch wheels with 235-45 tires. The front vendors stick out about 2 inches to allow addition of vents for some additional cooling. Now the back of the WRX has a sports sedan look. On the bottom, it's hard to miss the big quad exhaust tips and the lower diffuser with fins. And on top, on the deck lid, there's a small, subtle spoiler. When combined, the back of the WRX is transformed. As for trims, there are three trim levels to the WRX, not counting the STI variants. The base starts around $27,500, while the Limited starts a tad over $32,000. They all share the same 2-liter boxer engine, the same symmetrical all-wheel drive, and the same 6-speed manual. Now, a CVT transmission is available for the premium and limited trim. Even though the CVT transmission option might not sound very pleasing, but without it, you aren't able to get things such as a push-button start nor Subaru's EyeSight Safety Suite. Now, EyeSight uses a pair of cameras to study the road, and it gets you safety features such as adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, and pre-collision braking. This is available with the CVT-equipped WRXs. To me, it's a real mystery why Subaru can't add them to the manual equipped ones. As for the engine, the 2 liter turbocharged boxer engine pushes 268 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. Fuel economy is better with the 6 speed manual versus the CVT. Moving to the trunk, there's a good amount of space but with very little back here. There's no nets or cubby holes or anything like that. There is a spare tire underneath and the seat backs do fold down from the second row. The opening with the seats down is very wide and tall. Since this is a premium trim, the inside of the WRX is covered in cloth. The door panels and seats have some nice red stitching and there is some good contrast between different shades of gray. There is very little amenities however in the second row. There are no vents, no USB ports. As for space, I'm 5 feet 10 and I have only about 2 inches of legroom left and about the same for headroom. The seat cushions, however, feel very nice and comfortable. Now, here's a better look of the front cabin. Let me show you around. All right, I'm behind the steering wheel, so let me show you guys the cabin and some of the features you will find in this brand new WRX. Let's start out with the steering wheel. It definitely belongs in this WRX. It has a very nice sporty look. You can see the flat bottom. Overall design is it's just good looking and as you can see red stitching in the middle that matches the door panels and the seats right and also in terms of thickness the overall feel absolutely fantastic i like how the tendon two spot a little bit thicker and this leather that that's wrapped around feels nice so i'm gonna let you guys know how this is once i start driving now in terms of buttons there's not that many on this side is regular cruise control unfortunately there's no adaptive cruise control in here because on the six-speed manual WRX, you don't get eyesight. You don't get the pair of cameras you normally do and all the safety features that come with it. I don't know why that's the case, but you don't get it. So you don't get adaptive cruise control, first of all. 
And then over here, you can see this is pretty simple to control your volume, uh, scroll through some radio stations, your, um, your phone control. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. Now over here, this is to scroll through the menu for the gauge cluster. So you can see a couple things, time in the car, a digital speedometer, and then if you go into here, you can change a few things by pulling on this menu. Um, you can see you can change your screen settings, default settings, go back. If you go into screen settings, you can change things that that relate to your welcome goodbye screen, gauge initial movement, gear position indicator settings. So there's a few other things that you can change if you go into the settings mode. I'm just gonna go back. Uh, besides that, you do see your miles per gallon, your trip computer down there. You got a you got an analog tachometer, analog uh, speedometer. Um, it's in red. It matches the red stitching. I like the overall look, so no complaints there. Now, if you move to this side, you see some, some carbon fiber trim over here. This is for the trunk lid, your dimmer. This is for traction control if you want to turn that off. And then over here, this is pretty standard uh, window control, mirror controls. You do get auto up and down for both driver and passenger. Now, moving over here. This definitely looks very sporty and I love it. This is another info like kind of screen where you could see a whole lot of things, performance oriented things that you will want to know about in a WRX and you control that through this little switch here. So right now you can see the boost. This is like the boost meter, right? Uh, besides the clock and outside temperature, you can see what the peak boost would be, the PSI 17.8 and then what the current boost right now, which is in the negatives, and then you can scroll through and see a couple other things here. This is, um, this is just a clock. Here you can see your miles per gallon, right? Um, number of miles till you need to fill up. Here you can see the degree, the incline, decline. You can see where, the, where all the power is going. So th these are really cool stuff. So I think this is gonna be the one I'm just gonna leave here while I take a drive. Now moving down here, hazard light. Now you do have a nice infotainment screen over here. It is touch with a combination of a few knobs. So there's no buttons, these are all touch. But as you can see, if you go through, um, pretty, pretty responsive. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, those are standard also. Pandora and a couple other, um, other apps. But let's see, let's go back, let's go into settings. Right, so as you can see, it's pretty responsive. Not as large as the screens in some of the other Subarus I've tested, but it's a good size. And right now, the glare really isn't getting to me, although I do see it a little bit, a little bit. Now, of course, you can navigate by using the side buttons here. They're also touch, but you can do radio, phone, apps, and home. All right, now moving down here, Climate control, this is very, very basic. You only have a single zone climate control and auto off, okay? <laughs> this is fan control, recirculation, and you could select the modes, okay? And that's pretty much it. There's nothing else, but in this kind of sports sedan, that's really all you really need. Now, moving down here, you do have a 12V outlet and just a place to put your phone. Surprisingly, there are no USB ports none whatsoever up here which is really surprising i guess subaru just figured you will not need to plug your phone now over here of course you have a proper six-speed manual this is upgraded with the sti short throw shifter right and knob that's why it says sti on here and what i like is the fact that there is a lockout for reverse because one of the things i'm always scared about is to go from five to six but in here it's not physically possible okay you can't like you go five and six, even if I sh move it over, I can't, I have to pull on this, the lockout, then I could go into reverse, okay? So that, there is a lockout in the WRX and I actually prefer that over some of the Hondas that has an auto lockout, but just psychologically, I do like the fact there is a lockout here. And of course, you can see there is a WRX stamped here, some more red stitching. Over here, you got a couple of cup holders coin trade i guess but this will probably fly out if you put any coins in there you got heated seats no ventilated seats and armrests over here you do have a couple usb ports 
and a 12V outlet and a aux port. And that's pretty much it. Now as for these seats, really sporty looking. I like the overall design of these seats. They are of course cloth, but you do see the red stitching and they're well bolstered all the way from the top of the back all the way to the bottom, lower back, and of course the bottom seat cushion. So I'm gonna let you guys know how these seats are once I start driving. And then if you take a look at the door panel, you do have some more red stitching along with leather. And this is all soft plastic, so that's pretty good. And then if you go to the dash here, this is soft plastic. You have more carbon fiber trim, which really looks nice. I would have preferred if this trim was also carbon fiber. It kind of completes the look, but you only get over here and a small part over there. Now up here, you do have some home link buttons and you do have a sunroof, which is nice. It's not a panoramic, but it does let a lot of light in. All right, let's go for a drive and see how this WRX is on the roads. This is not a car you want to learn stick with, okay? The, the clutch is quite heavy. I, I got myself used to the clutch in the Hondas, you know, from the Civic, Civic SI, um, you know, the Accord. And you know what? Hondas have super, super butter smooth clutches where it's very forgiving. If you want to learn stick, really easy. Um, it's really hard to stall a car. I haven't stalled a car in a long time and I stalled twice in this already. <laughs> this clutch, uh, definitely a lot more firmer more of a rubbery feel right and it's it catches on quick real quick it uh it's not a very forgiving clutch but the shifter i do enjoy a lot this is a short throw remember the upgraded sti one and you know what very easy to to move around right to move from gear to gear very very easy short throw and has a nice feel and i love that lockout feature it just I think it's important. <laughs> you know what, one of the things I'm surprised by is, you know, before I came out to review this WRX, I read a lot, you know, people talked about how there was a lot of wind noise, it's noisy in here. Well, right now I'm cruising about 50 miles per hour and it's not that noisy, it isn't. I do hear the turbo boost, you know, I could hear the blow, blow off valve and that's nice. Um, I do hear a little bit of the, the road noise, but overall wind noise is not very bad. So it's not the quietest sedan out there, right? But it's definitely not bad at all. If you daily drive this, perfectly, perfectly fine. Once the turbo boost kicks in, man, this is a fast car. This is a fast car. I haven't really floored it yet because I'm still trying to get used to this clutch, but anytime, if you're in the right gear, third or fourth gear, and you just step on it lightly, man, you could feel the car move. There's so much boost, uh, so much power behind this thing. As for visibility, it's outstanding in here. The windshield is the largest I remember in a sedan. Most sedans have smaller, narrower uh, windshields. Not with this one. Th this WRX windshield is enormous, enormous. So that hood scoop, right? There's no problems looking over it. Side windows, absolutely big. Back window, nice and big. So no problems with visibility. And in terms of driving position, seating position, this is good. It's very good. And these seats that look like they're very bolstered, right? Holding you in from the top of the back to the bottom of the back to your butt. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I don't feel like it's too narrow. Like for me, um, I think it's just right on my back. It holds me in and I'm not slipping around whatsoever. So I really enjoy these seats. And uh, I would say these are better seats than the ones in a Civic Si. Now as for suspension, definitely on the stiffer side. Like right now I'm on a pretty bumpy freeway and I could definitely feel it, but it's not too bad. I've definitely been in cars that, that's much worse. As for the steering, I really like how the steering feels. First of all, the steering wheel, I kind of expected it, but I love the steering wheel. It just feels right. It's very comfortable, very precise. The steering feel is also nice. It's, it's a nice weight to it. And it's just, it's just controlled. You feel like 
you know exactly where this WRX is going, you know how to point it, and uh, away you go. So I love the steering feel in here and the steering wheel feel as well. Yeah, when you first accelerate, if you're trying to accelerate hard under 25 RPM or so, you really don't have that much power. But once you get above 2,500, 3,000 RPM, man, that torque really, really starts kicking in. And that's where the power just, man, there's just so much of it. And this is definitely a very quick, very quick sedan. But I will say that it takes it takes practice getting good in this i mean you know i've uh i sh messed up a few times you know stalled a few times so for beginners yeah it's gonna take some time to get used to this car this is a beast of a car once you do though one thing is for sure this clutch man if you are trying to drive this um <laughs> in stop and go traffic your left foot is gonna be sore when you get home. Um, it is, like I said, heavy and springy, right? So uh, I could see after a few times of this and stop and go traffic, your foot is really going to start feeling it. So is this still a good sports sedan? Yeah, you bet your ass it is. I mean, it is still very fun to drive. It's very, very fast. Um, you still get great visibility, great seating position, really good steering, steering feel, steering, uh, all that combined, and these seats. This is a really good sports sedan. Now, it is dated in some ways, right? The safety features like EyeSight is not included. You don't have USB ports. So there are a few things that make it a little bit dated, but overall, this is still a really good sports car and I really enjoy it, I really do. And plus, let's not forget the outside, especially in this black on black on black look, looks fantastic. Lastly, let's talk about the good and bad to this brand new WRX. Starting with the outside, it has a sports sedan look, which is fantastic. Inside, there's a great engine and six-speed manual combo. The steering and steering wheel feels fantastic. The WRX has very comfortable seats and great visibility. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto are standard. And finally, there's a very large trunk to second row opening for cargo. As for the bad, there's a few. It's mind boggling that EyeSight or push button start isn't available on a six speed WRX. There are no USB ports up front. The clutch is heavy and springy. There is turbo lag under 2,500 RPM. And finally, the fuel economy with CVT is lackluster. Overall, I'm giving the WRX a score of 89. And if you wanna see how it ranks among its peers, then check out driversonlyrankings.com. All right, thanks for watching guys. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe to the channel and check out some of these other videos.